Today we are working on Psalm number 108. Now, traditionally, Psalm 108 magically has the uses of blessing a home, bringing success in business, and also forgiving in gratitude of other people. There's so many other wonderful uses that you can find for this psalm, as there are for, for all the psalms. There are almost infinite ways that we can work with them. But today, we are going to work for success in business. Now, if you don't have your own business, that can be success in the business of your living, success in your life, having a successful life, period. But if you have a specific business that, that you want success in, you can uh, work this the psalm specifically for that. Now, if you'd like to use this to bless a home today or forgive someone today, you can do that as well. So you can use it however you decide. The way that we work these psalm spells is quite powerful and very, very simple. We take the psalm in question and we read it all the way through once without stopping. And then we go back through that same psalm and we take it verse by verse and we just kind of dissect it. We, we go underneath and we try to search for the hidden occult meanings behind those verses. And it's through the, the searching of those meanings that we are actually discovering those seeds of magic and thus planting those seeds of magic deeply in the fertile grounds of our mind, where they in a very real way take root and they grow blossom forth and bear fruit after their kind. And that is exactly what we are going to do together right now with Psalm number 108. O oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great above the heavens, and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth, that thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand, and answer me. God hath spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice, I will divide Sechem, and mete out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine, Ephraim also is the strength of mine head, Judah is my lawgiver, Moab is my washpot, over Edom will I cast out my shoe, over Philistia will I triumph. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, who cast us off? And wilt not thou, O God, go forth with our hosts? Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. All right, so this uh, psalm seems to be taking place when the psalmist is preparing for battle. And uh, it's, it's important to remember the, that in the days of these psalms, the battle was a normal thing, and battle was was part of the um, the spiritual life of these people. And so, for us, battling can be battling our lower nature, battling our problems. But when we go into battle, as they did in these psalms, we are going to battle with God, being the the one who who is battling on our behalf. So it says, Oh God, my heart is fixed. So let's remember who we're praying to here. We're speaking to, we are addressing God. And God does not mean for us the same thing as it does for a lot of people who work with Psalms. We think not religiously, we think magically. And so for us, God is not a specific deity and God is not something anthropomorphic. God is the one power of all the universe. There's one, there's one force. There's one source, there's one substance, there's only one. And because there's only one, there's nothing to oppose it. And therefore, our magic is omnipowerful because with God, all things truly are possible. If God is for us, no one can be against us. So, oh God, my heart is fixed. Our heart represents our deep mind. It can also represent our soul, but for us today, it means our deep mind. And if our deep mind is fixed on God, then only God's truths will 
manifest in our lives. It says, I will sing and give praise even with my glory. So singing and giving praise can mean singing songs, but for us, it's talking about singing with our souls. It's the singing is is uh, creating like vibrations unto God. So if you're singing praises, it means that you are uh, um, tuning your vibrations to the highest vibrations you're capable of. Uh, even with my glory, the glory is your aura. The glory is your electromagnetic field. So you're tuning your aura to God. Awake psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. So psaltery and harp, remember these are, are uh, pieces of music and it's a very bardic type of tra- tradition. So psaltery and harp are the instruments of a singer in in this particular case. So to awake psaltery and harp is saying that all the things that I use that I need to create these 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 vibrations I will I will use and I'm going to wake early. That means the first thing when I open my eyes I'm going to tune my aura right to to the highest thoughts that I'm capable of singing, the 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 highest thoughts I'm capable of thinking. I will. M- Awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. Now, the people in a magical sense represent the thoughts in your mind. So you're praising God among the people. No matter what thoughts you're thinking, especially first thing in the morning, it's saying here when you're waking early, no matter how bad you feel, no matter how much you hate mornings, no matter how how negative those thoughts are, you are immediately going to start thinking thinking high thoughts. You're going to immediately start start thinking thoughts of God. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. So praising God is acknowledging enthusiastically that God is good. So anytime you praise anything, it's acknowledging enthusiastically that, that it's good. So if you're praising your puppy, oh, good girl. If you're praising you know, your son, oh, good boy. If you're praising God, you're saying God is good. I'm so enthusiastic about the fact that there is only one power, and that power is all good, and that makes me so happy. <laughs> That's what praising God means. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. Now, the nations are your overreaching thought forms. They are, uh, they are thought systems. So individual thoughts are the people, and then the, 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 the thought forms are nations. So big nations are big thought forms. Little nations are smaller thought forms. Some of those big nations are thought forms that we share with the group consciousness. Very oftentimes it is. So when you sing praises unto God among the nations, that means that you are tuning those thought forms to the, to the vibrations of God, of the one power. For thy mercy is great above the heavens. So the mercy of God doesn't just mean stop hurting me. The mercy of God is is talking about everything on that sphere number four on the tree of life. It's all your good. It's everything good that 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 is possible for you is is mercy. For thy mercy is great above the heavens. That means there is no end. There is no end to the heights that that God can reach, and therefore there's no end to the heights that God wants you to reach. God doesn't want to keep you separate. God doesn't doesn't see you as separate. We're the ones doing separate. (laughs) God doesn't say, well, I'm up here. I'm high above the heavens. Hope you don't have a bad day down there, but you know, what can I do? No, God wants you to be right there with them, right there with them. There's no there, there is no end to the glory, to the, to the, to the awesomeness of your life that God wants for you. So God is great. Uh, thy mercy is great above the heavens, and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. So there's no end to the heights of truth. It's not like, well, as soon as I find out the truth, that's it. No, it goes on and on and on, and it's wonderful. It's so exciting. And that's why a lot of times when people say, well, if there's only one, how can you enjoy yourself if you don't have anything to compare against? You know, how can it be good and good and good if there's no bad to compare it against? Well, that's the mystery of of God is that there is no bad in God because there's nothing to shadow it. But but the idea that you need bad in order to enjoy good is something we made up because there is no bad. Bad doesn't exist. So this is starting to show us that it never ends 
your good never ends and you can keep reaching and reaching and reaching higher and higher. Uh, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens and thy glory above all the earth. So the glory of God is the aura of God, the aura of God. So think about the aura of God. The aura of God is that electromagnetic field of all good. That is the field of all possibility. It is the field of all power that we have always got access to. Uh, and, and thy truth reaches above, oh, sorry. And thy glory above all the earth that thy may be, that thy beloved may be delivered. So it's through the glory of God that we're delivered. In, in other words, our spells manifest by virtue of the fact that this field of power is always available to us. And that's, that's God's glory. That's God's aura. It's the field of power that's always available to us. They're going to find out how to use the field of power in scientific ways where we won't even need to worry about, you know, like fuel and things like that. They're going to recognize, the scientists are going to be able to tune into that at some point, but we're tuning into it now. We're tuning into it now. Uh, that thy beloved may be delivered, so that I can I can have what I need, so that my that my spell here can 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 come into manifestation. That's what that means. Save with thy right hand and answer me. No, so the right hand is based on the fact that they used to think everybody was right hand or supposed to be right handed. Right hand is the strongest hand. So it's a poetic way of saying as strong as God can be. That's that's what he's using or she's using or they're using on my behalf. So save with thy right hand and answer me, meaning that that the strength of God is mine now. God's strength is given unto me now in in this situation that I'm coming to the psalm for. God hath spoken in his holiness. Now, when God speaks, God doesn't speak like we do with vocal cords. God doesn't need that. The word of God, the speech of God is the creative urge of the universe. So God has spoken in his holiness. So everything that God does is holy. And so all creation is holy. So if there is something that's not holy, it didn't come from God. It's come from our own vain imaginings. Therefore, it doesn't really exist. I will rejoice. Okay, so this is God speaking. I will rejoice. I will divide Sechem and meet out the valley of Sukkot. Okay, so Sechem. These are these are cities that that were um, that were inv- that were triumphed over. Okay, in in these old stories. But we don't. It's not so much the theology that we're interested in because we we kind of believe we don't we, we don't kind of we really do believe that these psalms are probably older than these stories and that these stories were kind of replaced from whatever their older versions were. But Sechem and Sukkot, uh, they, those are ancient cities. Sechem represents um, burdens that you think of. That, that, you know, it means to, to bend down. That's literally what it means. So every time you're bowing down to your burdens, you're bowing down to your problems. That's what that is. So, so God's going to get rid of that. <laughs> dividing that meet out the valley of Sukkoth um, that's uh, that means interwoven that's what Sukkoth means and it means those temporary uh, it's temporary hiding places it's all that is temporal it's it's everything that's that you know that we're that we're tra- kind of running after that doesn't really mean anything so he's going to get rid of all or they're going to get rid of all of those temporal distractions all those distractions of ours uh, Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. So the God is claiming these. Gilead is is an enduring rock. It's a big mountain, and uh, it, it's uh, the place where spirit. It's the judgment of God, basically. It's where spirit sorts out what's true from what's false, what you want to keep versus what you don't want to keep. And so we want God's judgment. That's a, that's where Gilead is. Manasseh is another. Uh, it, it means to. It's another city, but it it, me, it makes to forget. That's what that means. Manasseh means that which makes to forget. So it's it's being able to forget your past, to forget your grievances, to forget. You know, it's like to, when you forgive, you do need to forget. You need to let go of your past. You need to not obsess over the past anymore. Ephraim 
is the strength of mine head, and Judah is my lawgiver. So Ephraim, it means doubly fruitful, and it means will. And Ephraim and Manasseh were two brothers, actually. Judah is my lawgiver. Now, Judah is the, that, the tribe of Israel out of whom uh, David was supposedly born. That just represents our own lineage to our Creator. That just represents that we have an unbroken lineage to our Creator. So that's the lawgiver. So the, the laws of God come straight from God, and we don't have to, we don't have, to have an intermediary. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. So Moab is the seed of the father, and it represents the physical world and the carnal mind. And Edom represents the 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 man of uh, of of carnal desires. So Moab, Philistia, and Edom are dealing with your senses and thinking that what you know what's going on with your body is the end of the story. So that's that's stuff that God's casting out from us in this whole uh, three four verses is that. Uh, we are going to get, or God is going to get rid of all of our burdens. God's going to get rid of all of the places in our mind where we're getting distracted from our good. And uh, Gilead, Manasseh are, are talking about, and Ephraim are talking about that which is enduring, that which is the, our relationship with God, which is enduring, that place where we are constantly connected and uh, forgetting that which has been a problem in the past so that we can keep our minds completely focused on God and also being doubly fruitful when we do that. Now, um, Moab and Edom and Philistia, we are getting rid of all of our addictions to thinking that our sense bodies are the end of the story and recognizing that those are distractions. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Here again, we're, we're thinking about going into battle. So are we going? Are we going into battle? Who's going to bring me in? Is that going to be God? Wilt thou, will not thou, O God, who has cast us off? Now, this is when what happens is when we, when we get too into our own thinking and we are not thinking along the, th- the lines of God, then when things don't work out, we say, oh, God cast me off. God forgot about me. God lost my file. I'm not, I, 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 God's too busy for me. And I guess I'm going to have to go to battle all by myself. No, you don't battle by yourself and God never lost your file. God's thinking about you right now. They are thinking about you with nothing but, but joy and, and gratitude that for the fact that you are doing what you're doing. They are very, very grateful for you. God is very grateful for you. Now it says, Wilt thou who has cast us off? God never cast you off. And wilt not thou, O God, go forth with our hosts? Yes. Yes. God's going to go forth with you, with our hosts. Now, instead of our hosts being an army, an actual army, our hosts are our thoughts. Our hosts are, remember, those nations and those people. Our thoughts are thinking thoughts of God as we go into these problems, as we are seeking to, whatever this is, if, you, if you're doing this for business, maybe you're having some problems in your business. If you're doing this to bless your home, maybe there's been some problems in your home. So you're, you're, you are not avoiding the problems. You're going into battle, so to speak, with these problems, but you're armed with the thoughts of God. Therefore, there is nothing to oppose you. There's nothing to thwart you. So you're not avoiding things when you're doing magic like this. You're going straight into the into the battle, but there is no real battle because the battle's over because God is with you. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Again, we look to God for the help because our own minds are vanity. We don't know what to do. We don't understand what to do. And that's why, you know, in A Course in Miracles, it says, uh, I do not know what anything including this means, and so I do not know how to respond to it. And I will not use my own past learning as the light to guide me now, is the, is the way that quote from A Course in Miracles goes. And that's very similar to what's happening here. Wilt thou not, O God, who, uh, uh, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. I don't want to go in thinking things on my own. I'm going to go in armed with the thoughts of God. I want to be led. I want to be guided. And I want to forget my past. I want to forget the way I used to do things. And I want to do things the way God wants me to do things now. 
though God, oh, sorry, excuse me, uh, through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Again, we are reminding ourselves we aren't there fighting. God is fighting the battle for us. And since God is fighting the battle for us, there is no battle. <laughs> what 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 is what kind of battle is there between light and dark? You turn on the light, woo, big battle, right? That then you just recognize that there is no darkness. When the light comes on, there's nothing to shadow it anymore. So there is nothing but light. And so when we through God we shall do valiantly, for it is He that shall tread down our enemies. The, your enemies have already been trodden down because you have no enemies. You have no enemies. You just thought you had enemies because of the vain imaginings of your own ego mind. And so now when you when you work with a psalm like this, uh, you are reorienting your thoughts toward God replacing all of your problems. So you don't have to run away from your problems. You go right straight into them because you recognize that your problems have already been solved. Now, isn't that good news? So you just keep coming back to this psalm again and again until you have peace and certainty about whatever the situation is that you brought to the psalm. And then you can uh, recognize that that means that your spell has taken and you can move on to something else. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again really soon. Much love and many, many blessings. Blessings.